everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are talking about my favorite books of the year so far. So we're talking about anything I've read between January and the beginning of June. I think I went into July with like 54 books or so already read this year. So very much good going so far that is already my yearly goal achieved at this point in time but so let's talk about some of the favorite books that have come out of that first half of the year so far let's start with one that i don't physically own so that i don't forget about it first up is magma by tora hjorsleif's daughter i do physically own it well I'm not getting up again. So Magma by Tora Hjorsleif's daughter is a book that I was gifted by Diana from We Know Each Other from Discord of Jolene uh, and I got this one in A Secret Santa and this one is a very short book and like on page there aren't that many like words there's very short chapters so it's very fast to go through but it is also a very difficult book to some extent because it deals with a somewhat of a toxic relationship where there is also like um, degrading sex scenes and the implication I think I'm not entirely sure anymore whether there is like any on on the page abuse but there's definitely that implication there's definitely some toxicity going on with this relationship uh, it's short I would say it's short and sweet but it's short and definitely not sweet but because of how it packs a punch within a short page count and I really thought it was very well done uh, let's move on to one of the ones that I have physically here. First up, let's talk about a series, and that is um, the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington. Sorry, I was thinking about the title of the trilogy. So I have read the first book two or three years ago, then read the second book um, the year after, I feel like, and I felt like, oh no, I have to reread the entire thing because I don't feel like I was actually understanding things. And so that second time around with the second book, I still had that same feeling. And so afterwards I kind of went through some of the chapters that I had the most issues with to try and figure out the chronology of that. And that's when things finally clicked. But I think that this is a really good series and um, it has its flaws, definitely. Um, um, but for, in spite of its flaws, I think it has a very interesting concept, good execution. I like it. I feel like it's fresh. It feels traditional, but it's doing new things and I didn't necessarily feel like uh, I could predict what was going to happen and stuff like that. It's complex, but not to the extent of feeling like overwhelming, except for that second book where I said that there is a lot of stuff involving time that just makes it more complex because the chapters are not really put in chronologic order, so you can get overwhelmed. But I will say that at the beginning of the third book, there's actually a recap that probably does the work that I did by going through all those chapters again for you. <laughs> but this is a series in which we're following three friends. The world in which they are living is a world that has seen a big conflict between magical people which are called gifted and non-magical people and as a consequence the gift or magic has basically been bound to these rules and so anybody who shows the gift has to be trained in it and upon a certain moment in time they will have to take a test and if they are unable to prove that they are in control of their powers they will have to have their powers basically stripped. And we are meeting up with these three friends who are part of this magical school at the onset of these sort of like tests. And one of them is very much anxious about it because he hasn't really been able to use his gift ever since coming into it. And he basically has this different and unique talent that he has kind of been keeping to himself because it is a talent that makes him think that maybe he is not really a gifted but an or. And aurors were the ones who were in power in the past and who had been misusing their strengths. Really enjoy this one. I will definitely say if you read book one, it definitely feels a lot more sort of like, not run of the mill, but it definitely feels more sort of like normal fantasy. It might not be like, what's the big deal? I definitely felt like, okay, uh, it feels traditional, but it's still fresh, it's still new, and I'm very much intrigued. But then book two and three very much push it into a new dimension. And like the end of book three kind of shows you what has been plotted out from the beginning. And I, I like reading books like that, books where at the end of it, you can kind of go back to the very first one and see how all of these foundational steps or put in place. Next up, let's talk about Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. So this is a sci-fi book. It is a time travel novel in which we're looking at a black woman who all of a sudden finds herself traveling back into the past to meet one of her ancestors in the time of slavery. And one of her 
uh, ancestors turns out to be a slave owner and so she is pulled back into this past time period in which she as a black woman of course is not safe at all i really enjoyed this one a whole lot i thought it was just like very interesting it deals with interesting thematics of course but it also just was like a page turner i needed to know what was going to happen uh, all the time and early on you like the first chapter i think you get sort of like a, a teaser for something that will happen later down the line and that is part of the reason that like made me go through it because i wanted to get to that point and figure out like what had happened to get to that point so highly highly recommend this one uh, i understand why a lot of people say that this is the best starting point for octavia e butler because this is just an amazing read that will make you want to read more by her. Next up, I do want to give a shout out as well to King's Dark Tidings. So, King's Dark Tidings, I reread the entirety of the series in uh, 2023, but then I still had the prequel, A Mage of No Renown, and the most recent book in its uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I want to say is the name, uh, to read this year for the first time. And both of these I gave five stars to. I love the series a whole ton. A Mage of No Renown, as this is a prequel, I'll be following a different character but I will mainly focusing on King's Dark Tidings in my explanation here. So King's Dark Tidings is a series in which we're following a character called Reskin who as a young boy was dropped off in this fortress where he was trained to be the perfect assassin. He was trained in Pollux, he was trained mainly in the art of you know fighting, uh, assassinations, knife skills, any type of skill needed for an assassin. And upon his sort of like graduation ceremony, he basically is ordered to kill all of his previous trainers, but they of course won't go down without a fight. And in the mayhem that ensues, his masters actually end up being killed as well. And so he is left to wander the world, not really knowing what his purpose was, not knowing what he was being trained for. And for the first time being confronted with normal people, normal life, a situation that he has no experience with and has never been trained for. His emotional intelligence is very, very low. His social intelligence is very low. He doesn't really, he knows how to put on the act, but he does not know how to genuinely interact with people. And that combination of just like a superior warrior who then just like socially stumbles through life just really, really works very well for me. Next up, we have The Liars Not by M.A. Carey. This is the second book in the Rock and Rose trilogy. I'm pulling this one up because I did also give the first book five stars, but that um, was a reread, and upon reread, it definitely did go a little bit slower for me, but The Liars Not uh, has really won my heart again. I am going to be reading the third and final book in this series within the month of July, which is The Labyrinth's Heart, but The Liars Not, I loved every second of it i was so engrossed so was like flying through it especially towards the like second half of it i was just like constantly listening to it constantly finding the time to pick it up this is a series in which we're looking at a character called ren who was part of this sort of like criminal uh child gang and as a child she basically kind of like um, protected herself and her siblings by killing the um, leader of their little criminal gang. However, that meant that they had to kind of escape the city because, you know, this is not done in the criminal world. You don't just uh, destroy your bosses uh, and get away with it. And so they had to flee the city. However, now they are returning in the in the skies, trying to infiltrate their way into high society, into a house to kind of steal their finances, not realizing that this house is on the brink of financial financial destruction. This book follows multiple characters, it has a sort of like tarot based magic system as well as a sort of like rune based magic system. It has, as I said, many many different characters, some of them are queer, there is also very queer normative world building behind this and we have a rook character who is basically a vigilante who's trying to right the wrongs that the policing force is basically kind of overlooking at this point in time. Love these characters is the main, like I love the story as well of course, but the characters are definitely what has made me fall in love with this one and I love how in, especially in the second book, there's also a few instances in which I could see that, you know, more stereotypical storytelling would see us having characters avoid 
uh, confiding in one another and thus conflict being created out of a lack of understanding for one another's purposes. But here we have instances there where it could have gone in that direction, but instead they choose to trust one another or they choose to open up to one another and uh, that creates like very different dynamics in the plots, which I definitely enjoy the whole ton. Next up, let's talk about the Some Desperate Glory by Emily Tesh. So this is one with a little bit of a lower rating. It didn't make it to the full five star rating, but it's definitely one that took me completely by surprise and I really enjoyed it a whole ton. So this is a sci-fi novel in which we're looking at this girl who basically, she and her brother are basically the top of their class. And then as they come of age, they get sort of like an assignment of what, you know, is in store for them and she along with all of the women are kind of like fearing of what will happen because this is a society that basically needs like it's society in disarray to some extent and they basically like need women to um, join the nursery to basically um, procreate in order to have new warriors for the future and so for most of the women in her group this is very much what they fear. She has always assumed that she would not get this fate however when she gets her assignments she turns out that she's also assigned to the nursery and that kind of changes her whole outlook on things and changes her whole path moving forward throughout this book. Really enjoyed this one a whole lot. It definitely has a lot to do with indoctrination as well, uh, and you know, like sort of like cultish behavior, and finding out you know the truth behind what you've been told your entire life. This also has this particular trope that I will not be referring to, but that I was super happy was in here because that's a trope that I really love. Uh, final physical book that I have. No, not the final one. I have another one as well, which will be difficult to talk about. Or like, it won't be difficult to talk about, but it's not one that you guys can be picking up. And that is Las Indignas by Agustina Basterica, which would be The Unworthy. This is the second book by Agustina Basterica. I think it's the second book, I'm not entirely sure whether she had written anything else, probably. She has a short story collection as well, I think. But so, um, Agustina Basterica is the author of Tender is the Flesh, uh, which is a book that I gave five stars to a few years ago. So when a new book was coming out by her, I needed to read it, and so I'm reading it. I read it in the original Spanish. The Unworthy is a post-apocalyptic book in which we're looking at a society where some women have found their way to a monastery as a place of refuge from the harshness of the outside world. And the monastery, however, is also not like a real place of refuge. It's still a society that definitely has its issues because she is part of this, there are many layers within the society and she's part of the unworthy or basically proving their word, proving their um, purity uh, in order to be able to ascend within the ranks. But there are also these women who have had, for example, their um, tongue cut out or their, their mouth sewn shut, their, shut, their ears cut off or their eyes gauged uh, crossed out, um, who are to some extent higher in ranking than her but who have had to endure those types of things. In this situation silence is everything. She cannot really openly speak about her opinions or her experiences or you know openly condemn what is going on because you know this is a very strict sort of like religious vibe going on so she is writing a sort of secret diary in which she not only talks about her experiences in the monastery but also about her experiences from before the time that she was there and from an earlier time in the monastery and a relationship that ensued with another inmate there inmate that makes it definitely sound like they are prisoners but to some extent they are but so really interesting one. I don't know when it's going to be translated, so I don't know when you guys could potentially get your hands on it, but I really love this one. It has definitely been like food for thought. Uh, next one that I physically, like final one that I physically have here is Ink Blood Sister Scribe by uh, Emma Torse. This is one that I read last month and that really took me by surprise as well. This is one that I also saw, I think, on like either the debut list for Goodreads or like the fantasy one and that a lot of people were unaware of. This is one that I found out about when I was looking at like anticipated reads for um, last year and it is one that I just didn't get around to but that I was seeing like positive reviews for for the people that were picking it up and I do definitely understand that because this one is to my in my opinion quite 
original, quite you know unique. Uh, in this one, we're looking at two sisters who basically grew up with a magical book collection that they have to kind of protect. They are half sisters, and the eldest sister, her mother, was actually killed protecting these books. And so at this point in time, the elder sister is living away from home. She has never really been able to hear the magic of the books, um, but her father has basically kind of asked her to stay clear of the house in order to protect them all. And then her sister who stayed home, she is the one who hears the magic and is trying to somehow be able to recreate the magic, but is finding herself unable to do so. However, at the beginning of this book, uh, the elder sister who has always been told that every year on a specific date she needs to be on the move, she needs to change location, she decides to not do so because she is in a happy relationship, this is a queer relationship, uh, and has decided that she wants to stick around and see what happens, and what happens isn't all that great. Really enjoyed this one a whole lot uh, and definitely would encourage you guys to pick it up, especially if you're feeling like what you're picking up is more or less the same sort of thing all the time. This will definitely be a breath of fresh air, I feel like. All right, I think I'm actually happy with that list. There are definitely a lot of other books that I found to be really great or that really worked very well for me, but not to the same level of being like, they are one of my favorites for this year, for example. So these, what were they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven then I think, right? These seven are my favorites so far this year. Let's see if they hold up and if they can stick around for the favorite list of 2024 uh, in December, January. But so yeah, uh, let me know if any of these books have sparked an interest for you guys and let me know what your favorite book of the year has been so far and whether you think it's something for me but so yeah then i'm gonna end this video see you guys for the next one bye